Good morning, everyone. Uh, so this is a plastic bottle for all of you. For me, it's a problem. I, I, I'm going to try to explain why it's a problem. So one of these plastic bottles, it takes 700 years to decompose. 20% uh, of them, they get recycled in average. But this 20% of them that get recycled, it costs a lot of energy and effort to make a lower product than a plastic bottle because they don't get recycled into plastic bottles. They get recycled into something else. When you buy water, 90% uh, of the cost is not for the water, it's for the bottle. And as well, the most shocking fact, at least for me, is that to produce one of these plastic bottles, like when you throw it in the garbage, uh, you need seven liters of water. And uh, 162 centiliters of oil, just to produce one plastic bottle. So that's a problem as well that is increasing. Uh, so the consumption of plastic bottles is increasing by almost 10 percent per year. Uh, this graph is shows the consumption since the 70s to now in the USA, but in Germany it's even worse. I was checking yesterday the data. Uh, you consume more bottles than the United States. Uh, I think it's over 150 per year per person at the moment. Uh, in some countries, it's even almost double. Like Mexico is, I think, per capita is the leading country on that. In global consumption is China. Uh, so I have been quite obsessed about this problem. And uh, with my friend Maciek, I have been trained as an architect. So we did this uh, architectural project called Debe Bere, where we went to different cities in Europe, and we collect thousands of plastic bottles. And what we did is try to involve the community to collect these plastic bottles, try to clean them and inflate them. And with a really simple technique that consists into kind of putting this plastic bottle in a bag and deflate the bag, uh, we were able to make some structures. I don't know if you can see how it works. So what we do is we collect a lot of plastic bottles, we put it in big bags, uh, we give it some shape, we disinflate, and we have a kind of like big structures made of, of plastic bottles. Good thing as well of these buildings is like when you want to change the shape, you just need to open the valve and change the shape and deflate again. But with this, we didn't solve the problem of the plastic bottles and how the people consume water on the go. So with my friend Pierre and my friend Guillaume, that they were uh, packaging engineers for L'Oreal for many years, we tried to have a, a go. And we end up with this, uh, it's called O. It's an edible plastic bottle. It's a membrane, basically, that encapsulates water in the same way that nature does. So if you see nature in different uh, scales, from cells to fruits, uh, use membranes, because it's a really, really efficient way of encapsulating liquids, because most of the material was in traction, not in compression. Uh, so our membrane is made of a, of a seaweed, of an algae. Uh, when you mix this uh, alginate with calcium and water, it creates a gel and this gel could contain water. Uh, this technique is called spherification, and it had been out there for many years, since the 50s. Uh, it was invented to make fake caviar. And lately, a Spanish chef called Ferran Adria brought it into the kind of like culinary experience, but we think it could be something that it could be a new way of packaging, because we think it could be a really simple way. It's extremely cheap, uh, it's biodegradable, and it even is edible. So there's two ways to drink it. One is you put it on your mouth and you splash it. The other one is you bite a bit and I'm going to try. When you empty your container, you can eat the membrane or throw it away. I'm going to eat it. That's it. Uh, here we have some people testing them. There's still some problems ahead. Uh, like for example, the membrane, we are not able to close it back. It's like a fruit. So we were thinking to, to make a small containers, like the same way that nature does in orange, for example. You have a small zip size containers inside of a bigger membrane. So this is uh, the vision that we have of having a small os, smaller than the one that I show you, inside of a bigger membrane. And you can eat it almost as a snack. So this is one of the small ones. This is one of the big ones that contains five of them. Uh, we are able to make now double layers as well. So you can put some label in the middle. Um, when we started this project, we didn't have a lab. Uh, as I told you, I'm an architect, I'm not a chemist. So we started this project on the kitchen. And 
Uh, it was quite powerful way to start the project because what we did is we did this recipe uh, because we found as well quite powerful that everyone can make OS at home, but no one can make a plastic bottle. So what we did, we did several workshops with different people, with kids, this is a huge one. And uh, we licensed it as Creative Commons, the first recipe that we got, and we put a video online uh, where you can see how uh, you can make it, more or less. A bit blurry, it was intentionally not to show uh, exactly how much percentage of ingredients they were, but the uh, answer of the online community was quite huge. A lot of people start to replicate uh, the same recipe and even improve it. So uh, this is some of the videos that people have done uh, replicating this uh, all. I think uh, this one on the top left, it has over 5 million views in YouTube. Uh, this is one of the major shows in Japan, showing the citizens how to make their own bottle. Uh, I think this is a TV in Berlin as well, uh, showing the people how to, how to make it. So this gives us some, uh, some energy to kind of like uh, keep going. And uh, the three of us, the three co-founders, we were studying in the Royal College of Art and Imperial College of London, a master in innovation design engineering. And after we graduate and we have this, uh, this answer from, from the community, uh, we got some, some initial uh, economic support from Climate Kick, that is our European institution. And that allowed us to, to move forward the project. So what we have been doing for one year is try to optimize this, uh, these properties. We have been done it in collaboration with uh, Imperial College. So these are uh, 160 students of chemistry uh, try to optimize the membrane properties in terms of diffusion, mechanical resistance, biodegradability. So you can see here some of the uh, things that we have been working. This is one of the pillable ones. So you can have the outside membrane peel it off, and you can inject the inside if you want to keep it on your pocket. Uh, this is the current team that we are working on. Uh, so uh, Pierre and Guillaume, uh, and uh, we have Kiran and Maria. They are scientists, really an experts in membranes. They have been working on, on membranes for many, many years in Imperial College. And the are of students that they are helping us now over the summer. Uh, we have done thicker membranes in order to make it more resistant. We have done a lot of tests in order to, to understand how these behave over time. Uh, this is a lot of plastic that we produce. <laughs> Um, this is how the membrane looks on a microscopic level. Uh, it's quite interesting as well. We are able as well to make, uh, because at the beginning we start with a technique of coating, but now we are able to make flat sheets of the same material that it really looks like plastic, it's quite flexible. So that opened the door for other kind of applications as well, like bags or caps or other kind of things that could change uh, things that plastic does. Um, we, are, we have some partners in terms of machine manufacturers uh, to manufacture this. We are trying to adapt some existing machines that they already produce different kind of products. This is a machine that produces paintballs for, uh, for this game, but it, it could be quite similar. Uh, we have some uh, contacts as well with alginate producers, people who collect seaweed. And uh, we have done some uh, small pilot test. So this is an event in Netherlands, a TEDx event, where we provide hydration for everyone. We're ha over kind of, I think, 300 people. Hopefully, uh, in the coming months, we were doing, trying to plan to do a pilot event in Wembley Stadium. So that's going to be a big challenge for us to make it happen. Also, there are some uh, public policies that could help a lot the project. So I don't know if you heard about, for example, San Francisco is banning selling plastic water bottles on city property. So this could help as well to find new alternatives, not only all, but all the kind of alternative to plastic bottles. And speaking about moonshots, for me, this was a real moonshot. This is oil. And 100 years ago, no one could imagine that this could contain the water that we drink nowadays. And with amazing piece of technology, for example, this is a plastic bottle that when we see it, we just see a plastic bottle, but it has six different layers of plastic in order to prevent the UV light, the, the air, and everything to go in and outside. So it had been quite well engineered for many years with a lot of development. So, and it looked impossible at the beginning to put you know, oil, put water, but nowadays it's possible. And I think it makes a big problem in terms of like overpackaging most of the of the products that we consume today, and it has really bad consequences not only for us but for the environment. 
So my moonshot of today is like why we could not make produce in the same way nature does when you, consume, when you consume one of the products of nature. It's not only that, I, I think there's an apple here, it's not only that you eat it and what you throw is not harmful for the environment, it's that this will, it, it can lead to something else. So when you eat an apple and you throw it away, a new apple tree could grow and many apples could come out. So it would be possible to think in a way of packaging in the same way or even, a, even broader than packaging, all the kind of produce, it could be the same. So you have a phone and when the phone isn't working, you can throw it away and a new phone tree could grow and you have more phones, more evolve. Um, so that's my moonshot of today. And in terms of challenge, uh, so it's quite simple, the challenge that I wanted to, to throw you. So we have a O oh, and we have a PAT plastic bottles. It's a kind of fight, uh, battle. Uh, PAT plastic bottles, 17 million tons per year. Uh, almost 100, uh, 100 million tons of CO2 as well. High functionality, uh, you can close it back. Uh, you can buy it almost everywhere. Uh, it's quite resistant maybe more than what we need just to drink water. Uh, but we're trying to kind of like fight against it with, with all that, uh, as you say, uh, well, it start to get better in terms of resistance and diffusion and all these kind of things, but it have much shorter uh, shelf life, for example. So it's comparable with fruits. Uh, it's more fragile. Uh, at the moment, as you see, if you don't have a double membrane, you cannot close it back. So what are your ideas? What are your kind of like uh, thoughts about how we can move forward in order to, we should challenge the people who drink plastic bottles and make them think that they are doing something bad every time they drink from water bottles. Or we, we should try to push forward quite a lot the functionality of, of this in order to match uh, the things that a plastic bottle can do. I think that's it. Uh, thank you very much.